Restoring old steam toys. This is part six. More work on the old Mammoth steam wagon. Making an airline adapter to fit in the safety valve hole and showing a problem with the oscillating cylinder where it meets the cylinder block. The episode starts with a bit of very simple plain turning, followed by drilling and threading the part to fit in the safety valve hole in the boiler. I also show a very common problem which makes Mamod steam engines not run very well. Let the show begin. This is a very easy item to manufacture, and if you're a beginner to model engineering and lathe work in general, then making simple parts like this to start with is not only an ideal introduction to lathe work, you end up with a very useful, usable part. I have a piece of hexagon brass in the chuck of my Boxford lathe. The Boxford is bigger than the Myford lathe, it's a 5 inch centre height, but you could make this part on any small lathe and if you were really clever you could make it in an electric drill, but I'm not going to go there, this is about lathe work. I reduced the diameter of one end of this piece of brass bar down to about 5 sixteenths of an inch. The end of the bar was already rounded, but I'm smoothing the round end, first by using a file, followed by some emery cloth. A couple of health and safety warnings here. When filing in the lathe, make sure the file has a handle, and usually I would fold over the emery cloth so it's thicker. I didn't do that in this instance because the pressure on the work was very light. The next part of the job involved using a centre drill to make a hole in the centre of the piece of bar, followed by a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill. And with this twist drill, I drilled all the way through. The finished part looked a bit rough, but this is just an illusion. You can remove all this mess just with your fingers, although I don't recommend doing that. I just rubbed the piece of hexagon bar on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper, 400 grade to be exact, and all of the roughness was removed, and now it looks quite good. When I repositioned this part in the chuck, it didn't run perfectly true but it's not a precision part, so this is not important. The only reason I removed the work from the chuck was to film the last two clips. What I'm doing at the moment is just turning some very shallow grooves to grip the silicone rubber pipe. Turning these grooves is not really essential for this application, because the pressure that a Mamod steam engine runs at is very low indeed. Here I'm finishing the job using a piece of scotch brite just to clean it up. It's time to part it off. I pulled the work further out of the chuck because I need to leave enough metal at the other end to turn it down to a quarter of an inch and thread it. I removed the bit that I wanted from the chip tray and put it in the chuck the other way around. Now once again I need to machine this part but this time accurately down to a quarter of an inch in diameter. Now comes the important part. The thread that I need is quarter by 26 and this is a BSF thread, British Standard Fine. And in the days before metric, this was a very popular thread. I'm not using the tailstock die holder, because I don't thread too many quarter BSF things, so I fit the die into a standard hand die holder, and keep it in line down the work by very carefully following it with the tailstock chuck. I'm not putting any pressure on the die holder with the tailstock chuck, merely following it to keep it in line. After cutting the thread, the final part of the job is to use a very narrow parting tool to make a shallow groove where the hexagon finishes and the thread begins. The reason for this is so that I can fit a silicone o-ring. When working on these small toy steam engines, you have to remember that the boiler bushes are soft soldered. And with a hexagon part where you can apply a spanner, you could inadvertently over tighten the part and when you tried to undo it maybe the bush would come out of the boiler. I've seen this happen a lot. Health and safety warning, never connect high pressure compressed air to a model boiler under any circumstances. If your compressor does not have a pressure gauge with a regulator valve on the air outlet, do not use it for this purpose. And to conclude the warnings, do not use a hose clip. It is unnecessary for low air pressure. I always use a spring clip on silicone rubber piping because I generally use higher pressure and I seldom work on small toys like this one. You have been warned. The engine is reluctant to start even with 20 pounds per square inch in the boiler. This is an oscillating cylinder engine and one disadvantage of oscillating cylinder engines is 
particularly with these small toy ones, they need to be run on low pressure. Look carefully at this clip and you will see that the reversing lever is moving about all over the place. The entire assembly seems to be loose. Why is this? These vastly overscale Mamod reversing units fitted to later models are quite a clever idea, but I've never liked them. I don't like the way they look and I don't like the way they work. And I really have to ask myself, do I really want a Mamod steam engine to run backwards? I've removed the trunnion pin, which is the pin with the spring that holds the cylinder to this unit. As you move the massive reversing lever, it changes the position of the cylinder relative to the ports on the port face. With the trunnion pin removed, I can have a look at the cylinder. And if you look carefully at the cylinder, the port face wear is quite uneven at one side. What has caused the problem? The answer, the owner of the engine. Here I'm demonstrating what I've just been talking about. And as you can see, a lot of pressure is put on the right-hand side of the port face when you pull the piston away from the crank pin. Here's a piston that I removed from the cylinder the wrong way. The problem had been caused a long time ago and not by me. When I looked at the port face from the top, I could see that it was bent. Using my small Barco adjustable spanner, I very carefully and very slightly bent the end of the port block outwards. You may notice how I've elevated the rear of the Mammoth steam wagon using a pair of pliers. Simple yet effective. And what is interesting is the more I ran the steam wagon, the smoother it got as the cylinder started to bed in on the port face in its new position. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.